we have very interesting topics from various eminent speakers from the user industry. We have two sessions for the day. First half, we have three topics, and second half, we have two topics. I request our audience to fill in the feedback forms after each session. The first topic of the day is Power Scheming by Mr. Stephen Milder and Mr. Hiko Merrier from Gleason, Switzerland, and Germany. I would request them to come on stage. Thank you so much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for this uh, perfect organization here at the IPTEX, and thanks for the audience uh, being here, uh, spending uh, the time with us. Um, my name is Stefan Windler. I'm a sales manager coming from the uh, Gleason plant in uh, Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to share this presentation with uh, a work colleague of mine, uh, Mr. Heiko Meyer, who is sitting uh, next to me. Um, the reason is um, we do have uh, several different power skiving machines in our Gleason portfolio and uh, I am representing the smallest machine, it calls the 100 PS, and Heiko Meyer will then address um, the larger machines coming from his plant in Germany. We're going to address the following topics. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about power skiving uh, in general a little bit, where it came from, and uh, for those who have been attending uh, the uh, presentation from yesterday from Klingenberg, it might be certain things we will repeat, but anyway, uh, it will be uh, based on our point of view. Uh, we will then uh, focus on the uh, tooling side, a very, very important uh, factor uh, by power skiving. Uh, of course, we go through the Gleason portfolio and uh, we are trying to answer why power skiving also a very interesting topic for you uh, and hopefully uh, your applications. And finally, we will then summarize uh, the, the presentation. Power skiving. Um, some of you might think it's quite a new process, but obviously it's not. If you take a look, it's over 100 years old already. Um, 1912, Mr. Pittler um, invented at least the theory. Uh, 1968, Gleason, uh, back then Fowder, um, invented the first power skiving machine, still mechanical basis. Uh, 1985, we gave it another shot with another mechanical machine. In 1999, uh, the first CNC power skiving machine came out. And, uh, you know, looking back, um, none of those machines were really um, a hot seller. Um, it wasn't, uh, the process wasn't just uh, successfully uh, until today, we can say. And, uh, of course, there were various reasons, you know. Um, Looking how much improvements we made on uh, the direct drive, uh, they are much stiffer today. Um, looking at the improvements we made uh, on the tooling side, uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing, you know, coding, the material as well, uh, and even the software uh, tools we have today to uh, calculate certain things on this process, to lay out the tools, we are much further than a couple of years ago, and uh, we are very proud today that we can say um, this process is now absolutely working if you choose the right partner, of course, and uh, hopefully we can uh, convince you to go with us uh, if it comes to power skiving. How does it work? Uh, I'm not sure if any of you know uh, the function of it. The cutting speed uh, drawn here in red is a result of the circumferential speed of the gear and the circumferential speed of the cutter. And uh, there is a cross-axis angle um, between cutter and workpiece uh, within 10 to 20 degrees uh, in the tool center point only. We decided um, to uh, show you a small section of a movie uh, in order to better understand um, uh, this process. Yeah. 
It will uh, currently show a vertical machine, um, a 600 uh, PS power skiving machine coming from Ludwigsburg. And as you can see now, um, the cutter is uh, on a cross axis angle. Now the simulation kicks in in a second or two. Now you can visually see how the chip will be formed, will be skived. Same happens also for uh, external uh, skive, uh, power skiving. So hopefully you, you have a better understanding of this process. I will now stop the video and uh, keep going. We made a comparison also um, of the tool tip track. Um, this is just uh, a statement here. There's nothing better or nothing wrong. Uh, if, if you follow the tip track on power skiving, it's a relatively uh, flat radius if you compare it uh, the tip track by hobbing. Um, it's based on the hob OD, of course. Um, and if you take a look what the shaping is doing, it's a straight, uh, a straight line. Now we are focusing a very important topic here, um, the tooling. Um, without the right tooling, you won't be able to power skive successfully. Gleason is able um, to provide you uh, all the required tools for power skiving, for internal or external, uh, with or without uh, step sharpening as well. Uh, we can supply uh, powder metal tools or also carbide tools. They're all easy to resharpen, uh, actually similar or uh, the same than uh, the shaper cutter as well. Now, uh, in order to design the right tool, uh, we offer um, a large software package we developed now over the years. And um, before we can design a tool, we have to run quite a few simulations here. And uh, what it is here, it shows an input data mask. I'm not quite sure if you can see it way in the back. However, it's uh, quite a, a simple data input mask like you have on a, on a um, normal hobbing machine or a shaping machine. You feed in the basic data, you feed in the workpiece data, and you feed in um, the tool data as well. Uh, on the right hand side, um, you define the number of cuts, and that's actually the first time where you will be confronted with some question mark, right? Uh, especially when you start um, power skiving. You don't know whether you should run uh, two, uh, two cuts or three cuts or four or five. Uh, you just don't know when you start. And um, this is a service we also provide you. If you buy that software package, we will, of course, train you on that software. Uh, we will uh, guide you um, so you become a better understanding of uh, what data you have to feed in. After you feed in these data, you can do uh, uh, various simulations in order to verify whether this process um, is going to be successful or not. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, you will see a top view um, of a gear. If you focus on the red line, uh, this is actually the, the target to skive off. On the right-hand side, if you pay attention to the parallel lines in the, mid in the middle, um, it shows the root diameter. On the left and right side, uh, you can see actually the, the curve, the cutting edge is, is moving by power skiving. So let's take a look at five cuts, okay? Um, they are all different, and this is very, very important to do that analyze. Um, some of those cuts are not gonna be the way they're supposed to be. Number two cut, for example, uh, will show some problem. Uh, the cutting line is too flat. Uh, unfortunately, with this uh, given time frame here, I cannot go deeper uh, into this topic, 
But um, what I wanted to show you here is part of our software package that we are able to uh, really uh, simulate the, the tool, uh, the tool design. And before you do that tool design, you need to run um, the simulation. Now we are coming to the Gleason uh, machine portfolio. Uh, so you might become a feeling of what we can offer based on your uh, parts, based on your part families. We have several machines, um, if you take a look at this portfolio. Uh, starting off on the left lower hand corner, um, it's the smallest uh, uh, Gleason machine, the 100 PS, made in Switzerland. That's where I'm coming from. Then we do have um, the larger brother made in uh, Germany. Heiko Meyer will have a couple of words later on of those machines, um, 300, 400, and, and 600 size. And we also can do uh, power skiving on, the, on some of the Phoenix uh, bevel hubbing machines as well. Now, taking a look at, these, at this chart here, uh, we try to do some, uh, some deviation in segments here. And um, if you take a look again, uh, starting off with the smallest machine, the 100 PS on the left lower hand corner, it's purely made for smaller gear, starting off with 0 0.3 module up to about module 2.5. Um, and then we have some overlapping, of course, uh, with the 300 uh, PS, which is dedicated for a uh, light truck, maybe uh, heavier cars, goes up to the 400 and 600 PS, uh, who would cover then or which will cover uh, the truck industry and some of the industrial gearboxes. Of course, the chop shop on the right hand upper corner, uh, that depending on which uh, field you are, uh, Every machine could be uh, dedicated uh, to run or uh, to solve your demands. I will have a couple of words um, on our machine from Switzerland, uh, the 100 PS. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's relatively based on the smaller module. Um, this machine is actually made for internal uh, also uh, and external uh, gears, splines. Uh, ring gears and also shaft parts. There is an optional tailstock uh, available for this machine in order to absorb uh, any, any, any possible vibration and of course for shaft parts uh, it, it's necessary anyway. I would like to show you another uh, section of a movie uh, with some applications of the 100 PS so you will uh, have a better understanding of uh, how the process will work. All the applications will be uh, show and dry, uh, dry, but as an option, we can also do uh, wet power skiving. It is always depending on the material, uh, on the tool. The 100 PS machine can um, be equipped with uh, power skiving cutters with bore type and also shaft, uh, shaft types, similar than uh, shaping cutters. Now here this is a relatively small module, 0 0.5. It's the back of a steering pinion. We uh, make a two cut, stretch it to here. And we are power skiving that part within a relatively short time It's another application, a spline, module one, 42 T's. Dedicated part, as you can see, uh, interference problem with the shoulder. Until today, uh, this part was only being uh, possible for uh, shaping. We'll show you another external example, uh, 1.5 module, 41 twos.
And now we are going to switch to an internal gear, a small uh, filigree ring, module 0 0.6. Now you see the cutter uh, type also changed to a shank uh, type cutter. <laughs> 